Alright guys, welcome to the third part of the show. This time we're going to talk to uh, Fanatic Shinobu about the assassins and also the specialist roles in the beta. So first of all, welcome Shinobu. Hey, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, we're going to look especially at Abathur and Falsa, uh, two of the heroes that were changed a lot in uh, the beta patch. And well, Shinobu, I know that you jumped on Abathur right away, so can you tell us a bit how you currently are playing the hero and did his role in the game change? Do you think it's going to be a viable addition to competitive play, or what do you think the changes have done to him? I'm currently playing him a very similar way, with adjusting to some talents they took away. Um, they took away a little bit of power on Spike Burst, which I was using to split push heavily. Mm -hmm. But they gave him a lot more late game power when it comes to split pushing. Like with the increase, the level one increase on the locust duration in addition to the health is huge. And it comes into play a lot late game if you want to split push because with the hive mind and things like that, you can get like up to eight locusts just pushing a lane, which is insane. But uh, he kind of lost a lot of team fight power. Like he got a lower cooldown on the um, ultimate evolution. But you can't use the heroics anymore. So it's kind of like you can fight more often, but you're a lot less powerful. And the new ultimate is kind of okay for split pushing. It seems, it seems not that great, though. It's kind of easy to kill and almost does the same damage as if you were to just clone a hero and go split push a lane. So I'm not too sure about that one. The only real advantage you get is you can still use your symbiote. What do you think about the uh, that they removed the uh, um, accessibility to the ultimate? You already touched upon that briefly, but it feels like it's really weird to copy Hero right now. Before that, you usually went for something like the Nazebo, you went for Tychus because you wanted to get access to Odin. Uh, the DPS heroes in general were just like your first pick. Did that change? What do you aim for now? Well, before it was kind of like you almost pick somebody for their ultimate. Like you'd pick a Tychus because you could go Odin. Um, you pick a Vala, things like that, like, because Strafe is awesome, or you want an extra rain. Now it's kind of like you have to pick somebody who has really nice base skills or base attack damage. Like, Rainer's a good example, or Hammer, because they're still going to be good. Their attack damage is still really high. Uh, Vala's also really good, because you can come right out and just throw your burst with the QW, and you still have decent auto attacks. Mm -hmm. So the clones are more favored towards, they're still kind of ranged, but before you could do some melee, like Arthas, if you want to just tank up a lot, but you can't really do that anymore because you don't have the ghouls. So it's mainly just ranged assassins with good base skills and attack damage, I would say, for clones. Do you think we're gonna, still going to see Abathur? Like, for a long time, he was either first pick or first ban, and now with the changes, he seems to be a bit weaker in the team fights, as you pointed out. Do you think it's still a choice for a competitive player, or do you think he's going to fall off there? Um, I think he definitely got weaker, unless uh, you're playing uh, something like possibly Blackhearts or uh, the new map, Sky Temple, because it's based on just destruction and there's kind of like chaos going and Abathur really thrives there like when buildings are being destroyed by themselves he just can push even better because he's more split push oriented now mm -hmm. and you pretty much you can go for a full split push build and split push the entire game and if you're allowed to do that it's super strong this patch like you got a real buff to that but if your team really needs you to help fight and they can't just stand off and do other things then he can't really be used I think okay so do you like the changes overall to him, or do you think that they were kind of unnecessary? Um, it's a double-edged sword for me because I, I really like playing him, and you can almost pick him in any situation at the moment, which is pretty cool because I like playing him, but it's also frustrating because you have to ban him on the same coin. You've got to give the respect to other teams that can play him and ban him almost every time. Mm -hmm. So I think now he's a more specialized pick, which is probably a better... Um, niche for him instead of just being picked every game so I think I overall like the changes and there's a lot still I have yet to explore because there's so many options with his new talents and his level 20 uh, level 20 upgrades especially okay fair enough I mean so much for Abathur let's focus maybe a bit on another hero that has seen a lot of changes and I guess that definitely is gonna affect competitive team play since we had Falstad picked a lot in the last few weeks and Blizzard kind of decided to completely rework the hero. Yeah, it's actually interesting, Falstad. Like, they gave him uh, a new W, which is essentially the same thing. It's just much easier to control. Like, you just pick a target and that's your target instead of, you know, hitting W and kind of like maneuvering your character to hit the right target and things like that. And it also does upfront damage. Which is really good. I think the skill itself overall 
is more damage output from him and also helps him deal with uh, tanks threatening him. Because they go on you, you just focus with that, and it's, it's much easier to get the damage off. Um, they remove a lot of his defensive options, though, which was kind of an issue. Like, they removed Stone Skin, but gave him a similar talent called Static Shield, which gives him the stacking 5% uh, of his health every lightning strike. That's actually, like, a really good point, and I want to just, like, ask you something because of that. Um, with the static change that we have right now, would it be viable for players to actually focus on the lightning over the boomerang talent, over the hammer talent now, just to give him that extra defensive abilities that he has with the, for example, increase in hits that the talent has? Or do you still think that it's just, like, an added bonus at the end? Um, I think it's really not that viable because it's at level 4 you have to take the extra strikes which is gathering power and gathering power right now is like godlike. Like if you stack that up you're just, <laughs> you're completely different here. Like you blow people up. What do you think in terms of like talents is now really the build to go for? We've seen a lot of players go for the extended range on the hammer on level 1 for example. Like people experiment with the new talents right now. What do you think would be like a really strong build for him at this point? Um, I think a very similar build uh, to last patch, actually, except, um, of course, he doesn't have rewind. Mm -hmm. So on 13, I would take the 15% more damage from Lightning Rod. And um, at level 1, it, it's nice to have a different option besides having to take Bribe every game. Like, you can take the Power Throw, mm -hmm. which might, might almost be, like, essential at this point, because that range is huge. 40% more range makes him a lot safer. And it was, it was pretty hard to land the hammer. Or, or it was not exactly safe to go up and melee and land that hammer. Yeah. Well, talk maybe a little bit about the second ultimate that he now got. Do you think that is going to see some play? Um. Oh, the second ultimate? I I don't think so. It looks a little bit like a troll ultimate. Yeah, just because it does zero damage. If it did a little bit of damage, I, I could maybe see it. Mm -hmm. But... I don't know. It looks with the, with that and the level 20 talent they get him, the uh, epic mount, um, maybe they wanted him to go for some sort of a split push, because with those two combined, there's no way anybody could ever catch you with a half-second cast on your fly. The one thing that I found actually like very interesting is that on one of the streams, I think it was the piece, I saw him just like, one hero tried to escape and you can just fly on the other side of the hero, use the ultimate and push him back into the entire group, <laughs> which was pretty fun, I have to say. I don't think it's going to be a viable play <laughs> in competitive play uh, games, but it looked funny as hell. That is <laughs> that's pretty awesome. But the, uh, the epic mount at level 20 actually is pretty much standard from what I've seen, like, regardless of what build you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, because he lost that rewinds, and uh, which you could get away from a lot of stuff using a double barrel roll, like almost anything, or Bolt of the Storm if you really need an instant cast, like, the fly actually comes up really fast and can almost be used as, like, an escape or a reposition in team fights, which is pretty nice. But he did lose the Bolt of the Storm, which is that instant escape that sometimes you need, so you can't get interrupted. Mm -hmm. So overall, false that a character that has seen an improvement, or do you think he got nerfed? Um, I think he's actually like almost in the same spot. Um, it's it was kind of more like a a change, like a quality of life change. Like it helped him out. He's not as like uh, you don't have to be like super close to do the double hammer for doing all your damage. Uh, you can kind of be far away and just do your hammer and your uh, laser. Or your hinterland blast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what that is about. <laughs> that was a very interesting rename. And the, uh, the epic mount talent actually allows you, because most of the time you're going to split push with Falstad and then join the fight later just because that's your power. You get extra XP for your team. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice because you'll actually come into the fight quicker because sometimes it takes a little bit to fly. Like there's a delay and like the team fight's already been going on for a few seconds. So it'll reduce that, which should help him a lot. Um, actually give him some extra power in team fights. So I think he's maybe the same or a little bit stronger. Okay, um, we have one more t uh, hero that we want to talk about in particular, and that is Nova, who also saw a few changes from Blizzard just in this patch now. And we've had Nova in a point where she was like completely overpowered. They went and reduced the damage on, t on the anti-armor shells that they had, Hot Shots, the talent that was called before. And after that, she didn't really see a lot of play. Now they touched her again. What do you think are the major changes here, and do you think that makes her viable in competitive play again? 
Um, well, overall, I think it's mostly a nerf. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it'll make her any more viable. Like the the hit to anti armor uh, shells again is kind of it's okay. It it reduces it not too much because it. Um, also reduce the attack speed slow and the damage to 250% over 300%, so it, it kind of just makes your burst a little lighter, but I still makes your overall damage the same. That change probably came to play because they felt really, really sorry for her when she was trying to take down the chests on Black Hearts Bay. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> or maybe they did. I haven't actually, like, uh, experimented with this exactly, but it was long enough to where you recloak. so if you were trying to take merc camps and didn't have your skills up, the mercs would just reset while you were trying to auto-attack. <laughs> <laughs> so it might be just short enough to where you can actually okay. take merc camps. I have to admit, with Nova, I was never desperate enough to t try and take merc camps on my own. <laughs> <It's still painful. laughs> I always were like, sh shooting my first round and then they're like, I need help! Help! Somebody help! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Besides that, the, um, the decoy not having collision is kind of sad for me because it was really fun to make plays and body block people with like you and your decoy because you're already so skinny and it's hard to body block. So two of you, you can actually do it and make some plays that way. But um, in return, they gave it more cast range, which is really nice. And the AI of it is actually like really good. Like I play Nova and I have trouble... I've had trouble this patch seeing which one is the real one. I'm just like, ah, because they kind of, they like orb walk. Yeah. <laughs> the clones are programmed to orb walk, so it's like really hard to tell unless they like cast a skill and do damage. That's the really only way you can tell. I, I wasted the Vala ult on the uh, Nova today because I completely forgot about the new AI and she was like making moves and I'm like, that seems to be the real one. Let's go straight for it and suddenly disappears and I felt really, really silly. <laughs> that new AI is pretty good. Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's it's probably like their bot AI. It's really yeah. awesome. I mean, before so there that, could be some tricks with that. Exactly. Yeah. Before that, you could like easily detect the real one, and right now you actually have to pay some attention. So yeah. Yeah. So overall, she might be a little bit better just because of the AI thing. But other than that, she's pretty much still the same. Or they took away her cooldown reduction at thirteen, which everybody was taking, which is kind of rough. So. You might have to actually go for uh, the double decoy build now. Okay. Well, when we are looking at the uh, at the assassins in general, do you think there's another one that really benefited from the patch or got, was hit really hard? Um, I'd say no one was really affected too much. Uh, Tastar's healing ward's better now, which is cool, and um, assassins in general. Uh, should be a little bit stronger now because the tanks lost all their resurgences. Mm -hmm. So tanks lost a little bit of power, and also Chen lost a little bit of power. Uh, <laughs> and he has to cast his ultimate now, which was kind of his thing. Like he was just invulnerable and a pain in the ass to all assassins. He can actually die now. I heard. Yeah, <laughs> rumor rumor has it he can actually die. Now Lowell already talked about that. He actually is a bit afraid that triple assassin builds might now extremely strong in competitive play. Yeah, that's it's definitely possible because you're already seeing them, and now with Chen being out of the picture, who is kind of like, well, it's too early to say he's out of the picture, but I think he's probably going to be out of the picture. Uh, he's like their public enemy number one. So that big <laughs> smile on the face up. every time you mention that Chen got nerfed <laughs> says it all. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he is the bane of my existence sometimes. Do you think that anything has changed in terms of like which heroes or which assassins we're gonna see picked? Um, there could be some interesting things with Falsed, but he's already picked a lot, so I don't think we'll see too much of a change there. Mm -hmm. Um, Nova, if someone like really, really knows how to use the clones and can consistently bait people, possibly. Other than that, I don't think priority really changed for assassins too much. There was very minimal changes there. Are there any changes that you would really like to see for any of the current assassin heroes? Um, well, personally, I don't like Jaina too much, but I know uh, my teammate Casel is a big fan and would like to see her actually get a buff. Oh yeah, I, I mean, like, talking about Jaina, I don't know what Blizzard was thinking there. Like, the hero already was weak as hell, and then they were like, oh, at least was squishy as hell, and then they decided to even nerf her. I was like, what? That was a change that I didn't understand at all. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, other than that, I think 
the assassins are in a pretty good spot. I'd like to see a return of uh, a Val auto attack build because that's my favorite way to play her, mm -hmm. and I don't really like the spot it's at right now. Maybe the the hidden unnerf of the strafe giving ten stacks again <laughs> <laughs> that only I seem to notice. That was a huge deal. Yeah, talk about that real quick. I mean, we, you pointed it out to me in the past, but let's talk about that uh, just to like finish things off here. So what was that? What happened actually to Vala with her strafe talent? Okay, well, in the patch that they nerfed the uh, attack speed on her first talent, her level 1 talent, um, before that patch, when you used the strafe, it used to automatically give you 10 stacks of hatred, which set you up perfectly to go right into an auto attack build. You'd already have the damage stacked up and the attack speed stacked up, and you could just go right in and do damage right after your strafe. And then after that patch, it just disappeared. You didn't get the 10 stacks anymore after strafe, and they nerfed the auto attack build in the same patch, so it's just really hard to make it viable. And then the multi shot builds with the uh, battle momentum pretty much became widespread, and I use it as well even though I prefer doing auto attacks. Do you think maybe having a bit of a compromise where when you come out of strafe you have instead of like a full stack of hatred just like half of it would already give her uh, a chance to see the auto attack build come back? It would be a nice set like maybe like one stack per second or something like that just because she is shooting like some somewhere in the halfway would be pretty nice and it would it would definitely help that build a lot. Okay. Well, Shinobu, thank you very much for talking with us about like assassins and everything. Congratulations also once again on joining up with Fnatic and being part of the Fnatic family now. And uh, well, best of luck for the upcoming tournaments and maybe we're going to see a bit of a change to the assassin lineup. Would be nice to see you guys maybe explore a few new ways. You or Nova with the new AI and the double hologram might be a thing. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> Nova's my favorite. <laughs> and uh, thanks again for having me and thank, thank you. No problem. See you soon. Bye-bye.